Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics, and welcome back to another stash ad video. This one is a little bit sad in a way, because these, this stash ad of mine actually comes from the sad passing of my friend here, John Harries. Now, John was a really good guy. I knew him for a long time. And uh, I met him when I first moved out here from British Columbia, British Columbia to Alberta. And um, when I started my hobby shop, actually, when I moved out here, I wanted to join a model car club. And I found that in the Tabletop Model Builders Club up in Calgary, which my friend John was a member of. So um, <clears throat> I met him and everybody else, of course. And in the first couple of years of me being in Alberta, uh, John had a store called Johnny's Hobbies in the Heritage Flea Market. So I, uh, I, I shopped a lot with John at that time from his store, bought a lot of things from his store, and that's where I got a lot of these really old models and whatnot. And I wanted to start my own store, and that was in... The heritage flea market that's where we were so john he was uh he basically gave me half of his collection well i i had to buy it but he gave me half of the collection and he started me up uh teach me what he knew about starting a business and that was in the heritage flea market and then he was going through some <laughs> life issues and i ended up buying out his original store, Johnny's Hobbies, and that became Monster Hobbies. Well, it was Monster Hobbies with a little bit, but I was helping him run his store as well as running Monster Hobbies. And then uh, something occurred and I ended up buying out his store and making it all Monster Hobbies. But John, he was a good guy, and he introduced me to his wholesalers and whatnot, and that's what got me started in my business. And eventually I, I grew from there. And John, he closed down his business entirely. But he was still selling models and whatnot on his own. And so what happened when he passed away with the stash ad is that his family members contacted, or they posted on Facebook and contacted people and whatnot. And to make a long story short, I was able to go up uh, they were having, basically, they were selling his hobby stuff. And this is what the stash ad is, is what I bought from all the things that they were selling from John's. And they, they were really nice because the only people that they invited to buy this stuff were the people in the Tabletop Model Car Club. And eventually, I do believe they are going to extend that out to the general public. But it was really nice that we, the club members, and John's friends, were able to uh, basically buy his stuff first. Because John had meaning to us, probably more than he would have had to just anybody from the general public. So, again, I want to thank the family for doing that. And I want to thank John uh, for helping me to get Monster Hobbies going back in those initial days of 2004. So that is 20 years ago. So I knew John when he was in his 50s, and he passed in his 70s. So again, really nice guy, and thanks for the family for hosting the, the sale of John's inventory and whatnot. And yeah, it was really nice. And I do believe they are doing it again soon but for, again, the club members, sort of a second second attempt, because I think a lot of us blew our paychecks, me included, for the week or two weeks or whatever. So they're letting us refresh to go back up. So that's nice. So without further ado, I know this is now getting into five minutes, according to my camera. Let's take a look at what I got, and it is quite a lot. And there's a quite a lot of neat models. And I even got books. So instead of doing like kind of an unboxing thing, which I might do. I'm just going to show the box tops and maybe open a one or two just to show. 
So without further ado, getting into the five minutes, let's check it out. So here is a look at the pile of things that I ended up getting. And as you can see, this is quite tall. Sorry for the uh, windows in the back here, but I didn't really have too much I could do at the moment. Anyway, let's take this down to the basement and check it out bit by bit. Now John was a pretty cool guy and he had a lot of motorcycle stuff as well as cars. These were the things he was interested in. And uh, I ended up getting this book, Flash 50's Flashback, a nostalgic trip from this collection. And again, I thought it was pretty cool. Got a whole bunch of old hot rodding stuff in there and what people did back in the day. The magazines related to the car world. And just neat stuff, you know? Really neat stuff. <laughs> so yeah, that is one of the books that I got. Let's take a look at a model kit. Now John had a lot of sealed and unsealed model kits in his collection. So I tried to grab sealed ones because uh, a couple of things. Now one of them is that anything sealed, of course, will have all the parts in it. So that is one thing. The second thing is John did a bit of resin casting. So sometimes he would take parts out of a kit and then resin cast them. And those parts may or may not have gotten back into the kit afterwards. And uh, I kind of know that from a little bit of experience because I did buy a lot of his collection before, back in 2004 when I started the store. And I did find, you know, the occasional kit that was supposed to have four wheels, it had three, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But um, I did collect, tried to get what I don't have in my current collection because this stuff is not going to go to my sale to be, or to my store to be resold. This is going in my personal collection for a museum that I want to open up in the future. So this 40 Ford Standard Coupe from Monogram, which is also the Ravel kit, they uh, did some name swapping back and forth because Ravel owned Monogram or vice versa. And uh, anyway, this is one I don't have. I have a lot of the AMT ones and I also have the Lindbergh one, which is, is an iffy kit. <laughs> But yeah, so I thought I would get this one, and it is in that pretty cool uh, collector type of box, as you can see. Oh, and another thing about John's basement is that it had flooded a few times in the past, so some kits are a bit moldy, and I tried to avoid those. <laughs> but uh, I did get one or two, just for what they were. And um, yeah, there's a lot of dust in there. And unfortunately, at the time, the uh, uh, John's family was working on fixing the house, renovating it, because I guess with his passing, they're going to eventually sell the house that he owned. So they were doing drywall and everything, and their uh, sewer system had backed up. So we were all touching the models and getting our hands all dusty and dirty, and then we couldn't wash our hands because... The water wasn't leaving the house, it was backing up in the drain pipes. So that was not good. So I will be cleaning these as I go along. Next up I got this really cool old 124 scale figure set from Tamiya. This is the Campus Friends set. And I know they've redone this and uh, upgraded the molds and everything. But this is the original one and you can see the little... Uh, Mini Cooper in the background in here and a bunch of the earlier Tamiya models. This is basically the 80s or early 90s Campus Friend set. So what's interesting about this is it's not a color image. So I don't know if this is like the first box or some... Like, I'm not sure on the history of this one. But anyway, you've got five friends and the little moped. So there is one guy... I think it's a girl on a moped, another guy, and then two other girls. One is playing tennis. So you know how I like figures and everything. These guys will fit in really nicely. But here you can see, if I tilt this, actually there's the image there. But you can see the dust in here as I go my finger on it. And this is basically how John's basement was, which is understandable because I think mine is kind of like this too. 
only not as bad. So I will wipe this off and uh, clean it up for my collection. Next up, I've got this little collection of these mini books, which I thought were quite cool. So here, I, I don't know if this is a reprint of this or not, but it's uh, rotting and restyling. And this is quite a thick little mini book. But again, it's got, I think, no, this has got to be original from the 50s. But of course, it's got all these cool things and whatnot. You know, I should do a little segment on my YouTube channel where I look at these books, because I've got quite a bit of these in my collection. Yeah, there it is, October 1959. So this is an original, and boy, it's in good shape. Except the back, little bits of uh, crinkles. But yeah, I should actually do... Um, I know one of the YouTubers does these little books, and he just kind of flips through. He's like, oh yeah, and here's some pictures from the contest, and here's something else, and oh, look at that, that's grills. Isn't that cool? Yeah, grills. Okay, yeah, yeah. But, of course, that is not the Monster Hobbies way. Monster Hobbies way is like, let's take a look at this cover. Now, what do you notice on here? Look at that cool engine and all the detail in there. That looks like a flathead Ford with four uh, quad carburetors on there. Possibly even Strombecker carburetors. And then we've got this Merc down here. Now, this is, I don't know whose that is. It probably says in the book. You know, that's how I would do it. I wouldn't be like, yeah, and then there's that. And then there's that. Oh, look at that. If you want to know more, pause the image. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not knocking the guy because he's got books I don't. So that's always good. But it, you know, the difference of the two formats. I'll take my time. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. And these are uh, traditional customs. Now, this is October 2014, but it's done in this style of the 50s ones. And, of course, featuring 50s cars, which John liked. And this is cool because it's all in full color all the way through. So these are kind of high-end and really wonderful. So, like I say, I mean, I should uh, go through these. Look at that on the back. Yanni's 59 Bonneville Part 2. Plus show coverage from Kansas and California. IA. California. IA. Now here's a rod and custom little pages from 2011. So they were starting to go back to that format for a little bit anyway. Again, nice, it's cool stuff. Oh, look at this. Uh, look at that. Mr. Model T. It's a stripped down 23 Model T or something? 26, okay. Still cool stuff. Oh, starting to come out of the staples there. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it really is. Okay, I guess Rod and Custom didn't have a good uh, staple set there. All right, here's another traditional Customs. Fantastic 58 Ford. Look, at there's the uh, pickup truck from AMT just came out. I have those for sale on my website if you want them. I've got quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, some ideas for you. Look at all this. Looky, okay, looky. Okay. Really neat. It's an Oldsmobile engine. 390. No, not an Olds. Oh, that's cool. I think I have this, a picture of this in one of the old 50s magazines. It's a 50 Ford, but it's been sectioned up the middle and then dropped in. Cool. Look at that. Oh, look at all the welds on there. Rebuilding the <laughs> looks like it's rebuilding the quarter panel arch, wheel arch, with welds. That's very interesting. Oh, look, it's even got some designs in here. Restyling of the couple of trucks. 51 International, mild and wild. Neat. It almost makes me think of AMT's 53 Ford and all that stuff that's in there. Look at that tail lamp. You know, it's funny with the modern tail lamps on modern cars. I wonder how many people in the 50s would have died for those because of all the, like, cool shapes like on, uh, I don't know, Nissan Pathfinder comes to mind, but <laughs> that might not be a cool car for you. But at any rate, like, some of those modern 
tail light ideas. I think they're taking them out of what guys were doing in the 50s. Oh, there's the copper cart. Candy passion to a tribute to Gail. Lots of neat stuff. Yeah, I should go over these uh, more depth. Would you like to see that? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, yeah, again, neat ones. Looks like an Oldsmobile 57. Look at that wheel. The wheel, the wheel of pain. <laughs> uh, good old Conan. Look, there's a hubcap design. Again, keep your stock hubcaps if you're doing customs. Oh, here's restyling for Oldsmobiles. Chevy. Nice work. The pre oh, this is the first issue, the premier issue. Look at that one, the gold. Dark green and gold. Eunice I Iberas, 55 Ford Custom. Look at that green with the black striping. Sorry for the reflection on there. Ooh, look at that. Deep flake metallic. I have some of that in purple. Ooh, look it. What's the front of this thing? Wow. Oh, there. I'll try to curve this so I don't get the glare. Really nice. I want to do my car. <laughs> Got a 51 Studebaker bullet nose out in the back. Look at this. Cantilevered headlights and everything. Cool. Cool beans, Daddy O. I want to see that green Ford. Where is it? <laughs> it's not fair. Oh, here it is. Look at that. What year? 55. 56 Olds headlights and 55 Plymouth grill lead the way for this traditional custom. Smooth appearance is enhanced with shaved bumper bolts. That's, that's where I want to go. I got all those old 50s books on how to do this stuff. Bumper bolts are easy. You, uh, you basically stick them through the bumper and then you weld them. Let's see. Put them through the square holes, I think. You, no, that wouldn't make sense. I think you might uh, put the bumper bolts behind and then weld it through the square hole. Then you grind the weld off so the bolt is actually behind the bumper, not going through it. And then you fill it in with your metal, and then you send it to your chrome plater for... I don't know how much chrome plating is going for. Don't tell me. <laughs> it's expensive. Anyway. All right. And then here's another one. Her first car since 1957. Wow. <clears throat> I wonder what happened to the first car. To the other car. The earlier car. Again, really cool things. My first custom. Great ideas for model building. You name it, it's in here. Okay, here's my last one. We'll look at another model. So we're nine minutes looking at these little guys. Okay. Yeah, traditional custom. There's some t-shirts you can get. Oh, there's the uh, thick flake. That's the purple metallic that I have right there. It's on that mercury. Mercury? No, 51 Ford. Or, yeah, 49 to 51. You can always tell because most people leave some trace of what the car was in the back. I wonder if it's got a close-up of it. Oh yeah, it's all about it. Yeah, that is metallic purple, deep flake Ed Roth color that I've got. Just got to get in on something. Oh, more sketches. Cool. All right, so let's look at some models again. Next up, we got the nice little 53 Ford Victoria from Lindbergh. And this is just before, well, not really. Okay, it's kind of interesting because if you look over here, it's got the round two logo printed on the box. But this is still the sort of the last box style that Lindbergh had. So I'm not really sure like historically how this fits in to uh, the acquisition from round two. But at any rate, 
here we have the 53 Ford Victoria kit, and this is the hardtop one. Now this later came out in the Coca-Cola box, if you remember. I actually had one of those for sale a while ago, but sold out. <laughs> anyway, so I thought I would get this one for my collection. And since we just looked at those 50s books uh, of customizing and whatnot, I thought this would be appropriate to show next. Here's another cool one that I acquired, the 49 Mercury Wagon. This is the Ravel California Wheels Edition. John had about three or four of these up there. Now what's interesting is John was still running his hobby shop, or, you know, for however his hobby shop worked, all the way up to when he passed away, because he's had a bunch of the current Mobius kits. There was a few of the Mercury pickup truck up there, which surprised me, because I didn't know John was uh, doing this. You know, we kind of lost a bit of touch over the years. And I'd see him at the uh, model kit shows and some of the in-town show-and-shine car shows and that. But we weren't really as close as we were back in, you know, 2004. Because he's in the big city and I'm way out in the small town. So trying to get together was always a bit tough. But anyway, so yeah, that was kind of amazing to see that he was still carrying on. It's good for him, uh, you know, in his later years there. But again, this is a really cool kit, so I couldn't resist uh, grabbing it. Again, sealed. So, in the future, well, for I guess I've got my what's in the box going on for a good amount of time. Because, yeah, I mean, 52 models in a year, if I'm doing it weekly, what's in the box. So, with this stuff I got from John, and if I go back up there again... I could be good for two years. Okay, this is a long box model, so it's gonna be a little hard to uh, fit in the camera the way I got it set up. But this is the Robbie the Robot special movie poster edition model kit. And uh, I got this one. This one's kind of special to me. And I'll tell you this story because it's sort of uh, like a, I don't know, tragic story, maybe. <laughs> with some redemption. Well, anyway, I don't know, however you want it. I'm, a, I'm no Shakespeare. So what happened is, a long time ago, John and I were going to the same wholesaler for our hobby shops. Uh, it was one of John's wholesalers that he introduced me to. So they had Robbie the Robot kits. Now, I like Robbie the Robot a lot. <clears throat> Maybe not, like, enough to have posters of him around the house and, you know a big one in the basement, like some collectors have, but, uh, like a reproduction Robbie, but I do like the Robbie, the robot, any, any of these sci-fi robots of the past. So, um, polar lights had the regular Robbies at the time without the girl. And I got one to sell at the store and I kind of bought one for myself, but I gave it to my wife to give to me as a Christmas present or a birthday present, one of the two. And uh, anyway, I got it for Christmas and I had it for a year. And then somebody came in the store and they really wanted a Robbie the Robot. And I went to my wholesalers and they still had a few. And I figured, okay, well, what I'll do is I will sell the one that I got for Christmas to this person, and then I'll go get another one from the wholesaler. Well, when I went to the wholesaler, they sold out, and then they never had that one again. So I've been wanting to get another Robbie the Robot, and, um, you know, I don't really want to go shop on eBay and all this kind of jazz. So when I went up to John's place, he had this one, and uh, I brought my friend James, and he, James actually found it and pointed it out to me, and so I ended up getting it. So thanks to John again, um, post posthumously, I got one of these. And uh, yeah, it's a real special kit to me. So I am going to build this. I'm probably going to put that build on my uh, Monster Hobbies Monster Model Dungeon YouTube channel, which deals with all the uh, monster kits and whatnot. So if you're a fan of that, check it out, subscribe to it. I also have the Build a Monster contest that I do every Halloween. So if you're into this, go for it. Now, I do believe John got the monster models, not necessarily because he was into monster models, 
But I think he got these to sell to people in the club that are into monster and sci-fi and whatever models. Like my friend Will, who is an Elvis impersonator. And um, yeah, him and his friends are into it. So I think John got these to sell to them. So luckily they didn't buy it because I really wanted Robbie the Robot. So I'm glad all the cards came into place and I got one. Now here's another book that was up in the collection, and this one is pretty cool. Early Custom Culture, Custom Cars, and the Hot Rods Photograph by George Barris. Now I have met George Barris. Well, again, he's gone. But I met him in the past at one of the World of Wheels shows, and I had my Go Mad Nomad 1955 Chevy Nomad AMT kit that I made, and I showed that to George, and he loved it and uh, autographed it. So finding this book in my friend John's collection was pretty cool. Look at this pinstripe. That's neat. That is a uh, a snake wrapping right up into the quarter panel. <laughs> and what, what is this? The Buick, I think? Chrome trim going down there? But again, it's custom, so hard to know. But I do know that that shape is a GM. There's a Hirohito Merc. Bobby. Hirohata, sorry, not Hirohito. <laughs> oh yeah, lots of cool stuff in here. So this will be a good one to read. I don't know if I can go through this page by page. Oh look! There. There's that 53 Ford pickup truck and it's got the AMT front grille in it. Uh, well, I mean, you know what I mean. This is the truck, and then AMT put this grill in their kit. And I actually did pick up one of these from uh, John. So what I'll do next is I'll show... Yeah, I'll find that model in the pile, and I'll show it to you, and I'll show you this picture again. So let's... How can I mark it? I've got this little crappy piece of sandpaper here, so I'll just put that in the corner. And we'll, we'll compare that in a minute. But yeah, look at all this stuff. Cool, cool. It's 53 Studebaker. Doesn't look like they really customized this much. In fact, it doesn't even look like they customized it at all. Milton J. Artinix, 53 Studebaker, customized by himself. But what did he do? <laughs> Just painted the stripe up there? I don't know. Look at all the detail in the back here with those. Looks like they integrated, um, is it 58 Ford tail lamps in there or something? Or Cadillac bullets? Maybe Cadillac bullets, but in the style of the 58 Ford? Anyway, whatever. It's pretty cool. There's the, uh, that one. I know, um, somebody made a model of that. Not a model of it, but they took the AMT 50... 50 Chevy 3100 and cut it all up and turned it into this in one of the old uh, scale auto magazines. That was one thing I I couldn't find in John's collection of books. It's any scale auto enthusiast or car modeler magazines. And I kind of wish I had because I lost all mine in the High River Flood. And that was sad. Another sad story of things lost. Because the ones in the High River Flood I had got over a period of years by going in uh, from North Vancouver all the way out to New Westminster in Vancouver on the C train and the Sky train when I was a kid collecting those magazines over like a decade and they all went underwater in one instant. So that was sad. So anyway, let's look at, uh, let, let me find that Ford and then we'll compare the picture. All right, so here we have the AMT 1953 Ford pickup truck. And now you guys recognize this one, of course. Now this is the Wildcat grill in here. But if we turn it up on the side and really go in, okay. <laughs> Though there's that front grill from the truck that's pictured in that George Barris book. And 
Now I have done a full unboxing of this one on my channel. I just wanted to get another one because uh, this truck is amazing. There it is there. Oh, unfortunately, I think the instructions are right on the bottom. Okay. Yeah, naturally. I won't be able to get that back in. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you fall over there. Okay. Bear with me. Okay, let's see. Uh, it just won't show it in the actual truck. Darn it. But you guys know what it looks like, right? Okay. So here we are. Now, looking for my little piece of sandpaper. <laughs> for those of you who are not aware of the similarities between this truck and the AMT kit, I'll just take a quick look. So there's the truck there. And then there's the AMT kit. And you just put that right in there instead of the Wildcat grill. And you would have this truck. So again, George Barris's influence was on that original Trophy Series kit back in 1963. Carrying on with our trucks, this is one I got from John. Now this one is really cool because this is the first edition of this kit. And uh, I've got the Snap Together one, which was like molded in single panels and you screw it together. And I did an unboxing of that on my channel as well. But this is the one that has the engine and the frame and everything. So it's more deluxe and you guys are in luck because the wrap is off of it. So I can show you a little bit of it before I do a full unboxing. But look at, you get the cargo bed, the chrome hubcaps, Thrift Master six cylinder, and a detailed interior in this thing. It's a beauty. Any of you uh, built it? Let me know in the comments down below how you liked it, because I want to build it. Now, it is open box, so hopefully there's nothing missing. <laughs> but yeah, there's the instructions there. And see all the individual look at that radiator that is cool let's bring that up unfortunately john smoked a lot so i'm getting a whole bunch of smoky models i'm a non-smoker <laughs> so it's uh yeah hopefully the uh, enamel paint i'm going to use will suck up the smell of the cigarettes but anyway look at that that is so nicely done this again is another one of those AMT, um, well, I'll call them a master class model because this was built by that team back in uh, the 90s when they were competing against Tamiya and that for most detailed kits. So this is of that era and boy, it is fantastic. I've seen a lot of videos where people will uh, fill in these open side windows and make it more like the closed cab. But that's not me, man. I'm going to build this thing factory stock, factory AMT stock, because <laughs> it's nice, nice kit. So look for this, uh, what's in the box coming up. I don't know when, past this video. <laughs> anyway, past the release date of this video. But yeah, this is another really cool one and I'm glad I got it. Now here's another book that I ended up getting out of John's collection. And this used to be a library book. Look at that. There's the uh, library registration tag. But it's Heroes of Stock Car Racing. I'm not quite by Bill Libby. <laughs> Maybe I should mention authors in here. Yeah, there's the uh, barcode. So this was... Oh, Drumheller Municipal Library. John lived in Drumheller for a while, so... That's interesting. They must have been having a book sale. But this is kind of cool. Lee and Richard Petty, like father and son. Got a whole bunch of stuff about the speedways and whatnot. Okay, so who's... Introduction, Lee and Richard Petty, Fireball Roberts and Joe Weatherly, Pops Turner and Junior Johnson, Freddie Lorenz, 
AJ Foyet, Leroy Yarborough, Kale Yarborough, Bobby Ellison, Dave Pearson. So I wonder when, there, look at the Plymouth the super bird there. Richard Petty's super bird too. Yeah. Okay, when did this come out? Property of the drum helicopter driver. I love that. <laughs> when did this come out? No copyright date? Random house? It's got it. Oh, what's in here? Copyright 1975 by Random House. This came out a year after I did. <laughs> the year after I was born. <laughs> all right. Look at all that. That's cool. And Dave Pearson getting ready to drive in the NASCAR. Again, really cool. And it's got all their stories too. What happened in the race. It's a good. I want to write a little story that has a... Uh, the race in it. Hey, you guys remember these? Who checked out the book and when? Too bad it's just September. It doesn't have the year. Wonder who. I remember um, in our book, you used to have to write your name there in our school library, and then it had the the date and the year. But again, yeah, a really cool book. I'm glad John picked this up and I picked it up off of John. Now this is another really interesting kit. And I'll tell a bit of the story as to why John has this and why I got it. Well, I got it because it was cool. <laughs> anyway, so that's my story on that. No, uh, but now when I first met John, remember I, I said that uh, initially I had got half his store and turned that into Monster Hobbies, and then eventually I got the whole thing, or bought the whole thing. I bought the whole thing. Um, when we separated his original store, I took all his model cars and trains and whatever, and he wanted to... Or I didn't take the trains. He wanted to sell the trains. He had a whole collection of model trains, and he wanted to sell those. So we split the store. So in the last days of Johnny's Hobbies, it was all model trains. Now, I don't know if this was part of that or because I never I don't remember ever seeing this before. But when we were going through his collection there, his family was kind of cool because they set up everything on shelves in his basement and wrapped it around like a big giant store. And this went all through his basement. <laughs> he had that much stuff. And uh, they had a train section in there and this was in there. And I thought, oh, man, this is cool because I want to build a garage diorama. And even though this is HO scale, I can take and enlarge the sizes. And I've got a YouTube video on the channel, on my Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage channel, that shows you how to scale it up. But, um, yeah, now, this box opens up in a really unusual way. Okay, I got it here. Let's just move the lid out of here. So you take the lid off and you got this. Okay. Okay, the lid goes there. <laughs> now let's carefully take this cardboard off. Look at this thing. Let's see now. Yeah, unfold there. And carefully slide it out. Wow. I Oh, it's got dust on the inside. <laughs> dust on the inside. Look at the AMC Javelin, or, uh, yeah, it's an AMX. Two AMXs in there. Look at this. Really looks toy-like, but <laughs> it's still really cool, though. Man, service station with doors. I think they're, they look like they should flip up, but I'm not going to risk it. Yeah, look at that. Union 76. How many of you guys have seen this or owned one of these for your train sets? Man, that is so cool. It's got the bathrooms in the back. Yeah, <laughs> pay a quarter. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, and there's one Chevy Camaro in here. <laughs> it's just funny. Oh, no, there's two. There's one inside the garage as well. Yeah, this is amazing. Looks like there's a 
baggy inside. I wonder if you can... How, do you, how would you get that out? Oh, that's how. Oops, careful. Don't want to rip that bulb out of there. So what's this? Some... looks like something that broke off of somewhere? I don't know. Car's got a... on a hoist. This would be kind of cool to actually, you know, the way other doors do open. They uh, swing outward. A couple little arms in there. But this would kind of be cool to dress up in there and then put some figures in it. Uh, but for now, we'll just put it back in the box. So what do you think of this garage? You guys like that? Let me know in the comments down below. Now here's another model kit that was in John's collection, but has a lot of significance for me. And the reason why is my Uncle Albert, when he was a young guy in his 20s, in the 50s, he had an Austin Healey 106, and he kept that car until the day he passed away, and way back before my dad passed away. But at any rate, back in the day, when I was young, I found one of these in a hobby shop, and I knew my uncle had the car, so I bought it for him. And my uncle never built the model, because my uncle, he, when he was young, he won a contest, and it was an intelligence contest, and he ended up being the fifth smartest man in Canada, in the 50s, in all of Canada, from coast to coast. So... <laughs> He was quite a bit of a perfectionist type of guy, too. Highly intelligent. And he opened up the model kit, and it was missing a pan or something that his car had in real life. So he never built the model because it was missing this pan. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was a little extreme, too. Um, and my dad was like, well, why doesn't, why doesn't he just buy a sheet of plastic and cut it to shape in the shape of the pan and glue it on there, but we never got an answer to that. But anyway, if you have seen my videos where I show the Dykes Encyclopedia, that was the book that he won in that this Smartest Man in Canada contest. And I inherited that. So, now, when my uncle passed, or when my uncle moved, I don't know if he took the model with him. And when he passed away, he was in a different place, and the government came in because he had no will, and they dispersed everything, and uh, that kind of jazz. And um, this model disappeared. So when I saw this in John's collection, I, I bought it because I wanted to build my uncle's car. So here it is. My uncle's car, uh, there was some pictures because when my parents ended up clearing out my grandparents' house, my uncle's car was still there what was left of it was still there. And they dragged it away and they got some pictures of it. And I do believe it was gold. So I'm going to have to find those pictures. But it's sort of sad what happened with his car because my dad and my grandpa... So was, this is at my uh, grandparents' place. And my <clears throat> grandpa had a Packard in the garage. And he rent... Or, you know, basically let my dad put his Packard in beside my grandpa's Packard. So there was two Packards in this garage, and the garage wasn't super big. And um, my uncle's Austin... Now, I think there was some sort of minor conflict in the family regarding my uncle. But anyway, my grandpa wouldn't let my uncle have his Austin Healey in the garage. So my uncle parked his Austin Healey in the alleyway behind the garage... And over time, people were coming and they were stealing parts off of my uncle's Austin and taking them home, I guess, for their Austins. And um, I guess they figured the Austin was abandoned. So after my grandpa passed away, this is a year after I was born, my uncle took my grandpa's Packard and cut it up piece by piece and threw it in the trash and eventually put his Healy in the garage where the Packard was. And uh, my dad inherited some of those Packard parts, and all that was really left was the engine. And 
I think the differential or something, because my uncle couldn't lift those to put them in the trash. And I guess he didn't get around to unbolting everything. That was a straight eight engine in that thing, so it was heavy. And uh, yes, we never got to throw away that Packard, but it, ugh. when my dad found out about my, my uncle throwing away the Packard, my dad almost died there. <laughs> because man, who throws away? I think it was a 1936 Packard. Now here's another cool book that I ended up getting from John. This is the Model Car, Truck, and Motorcycle Handbook by Robert Schiller. Schilscher. Schilscher, I think. Again, this looks like it's from the 70s. And I just noticed now on the back, there's that Mercer. And my dad built one of these. I'll have to show it one day. My show and tell section. I do believe this came out in the 70s. It looks like it. Tells you what's in the panels. Copyright 1978. Again, though, really cool stuff. I like all these old books. Even though they're black and white. It gives you a lot of model ideas. Hey, there's a Sock and Martin Cougar Cuda. Zipping by. It's the backdrop. You take your camera back in the day. This is what I hate about digital cameras. You can't do this effect on a digital camera right through the lens. It, I tried it with mine, and it compensates. It constantly goes, the computer chip in there goes, oh, uh, he's doing something like this. Okay, compensate. And then all this background is in perfect focus. We are trying it. Uh, my daughter took some photography, and I took photography. I got an award for photography back in the day, so I was trying to do this stuff to show her. It doesn't work in digital camera. Anyway, look at all this cool stuff. Model kits. Look at the blueprints. <laughs> this is when uh, people took model kit building seriously. Nowadays it's just, I can buy a plastic kit and there you go. There's all the, okay, monograms, 25th. Hey, they made a mistake, didn't they? AMT made the 32 Chevy. Anyway, yeah, lots of stuff. Lots. Oh, my dad has this kit. I inherited it and it is so brittle. If you sneeze, you break it. And unfortunately, it got caught in somebody's shirt and uh, fell off the table and hit the ground and exploded. And I've got to try to rebuild that somehow. The little door hinges are just microscopic pins, uh, plastic pins. So, of course, you end up breaking those. Look, at here's how to... Uh... Oh, Frenching headlights right there. Pete, take note if you're watching this. Here's how to chop your top. Well, of course, Pete knows this stuff. He doesn't have to take notice, but it is cool that it's in here. Look at, there's the, the body before and after. That's cool. How to cut these complicated tops. Open the doors. Look at this. There you go, Pete. Making your wheel arches with entire circles and then cutting the bottoms off. <laughs> fender flares. That's an idea for you. Make your fender flares out of complete circular pipe and then cut them off. Anyway, yeah, neat stuff. Good old days when they, look at all the different wire thicknesses too. Taught you how to build this stuff. Putting on your decals, cutting in panel lines, pinstriping, using pinstriper paint. Awesome. Okay, let's look at some more kits. Now we've got a few more model kits here. And uh, this is one that I carry in the store. And like I said, John had some pretty up-to-date stuff as well as vintage stuff. So here's the Chrysler 300 Mobius kit. Now, I have sold a bunch of these at my hobby shop. And uh, this one now is for me because I want to see what this is like. I like their Hudson kits. So this should be of the uh, same caliber of that. So look for a unboxing of this one coming up on the channel and uh, yeah I will enjoy it. Now here is one that I did own a while ago and I built it as the custom as a lowrider. Now this time around I'm going to build it factory stock 
and uh, then I'd have both versions. This, of course, is a later version from round two. It's got the Continental kit and the finned disc brake, as well as the scissor jack and the elephant. I was wondering where that elephant came from that I put in my pink truck, and uh, looking at the box now, I figured it out. Same with the telephone. Again, really cool custom parts in here. This is one of those kits that you could build a hundred different ways, but for my purposes, I'm going to go factory stock.